All right, beginning with updates from the Russia-Ukraine front. Backing its daring excursion into Russia, Ukraine is expanding its aerial attacks on strategic targets inside Russian territory. So far, it has blown up bridges in the Kursk region, an air base and an oil depot deep inside Russian territory. Besides the incursion, what has come as a surprise is that after its initial total silence about its plans, Kiev is now widely enthusiastically sharing satellite imagery of the attacks. Just last week, Ukraine's Air Force shared videos that purported to show at least two strategic bridges blown up over the same river in Russia's southern Kursk border. Satellite imagery showed at least one bridge destroyed, spanning near the town of Gush Klushkovo. On Wednesday, Ukraine's military shared a video saying its special forces were using the US-manufactured high-mobility artillery rocket system, commonly known as HIMARS, to destroy pontoon bridges and engineering equipment in the Kursk region. Now, this marked the first official acknowledgement that Kiev was indeed using Western weapons in the Kursk offensive. The spate of videos shared by Kiev in recent days seems like an attempt to project confidence over its ability to strike targets and stoke unease inside Russia. Ukraine also struck a diesel depot in the town of Proletarsk in Russia's southern Rostov region, which borders Ukraine. The depot was, has been ablaze for days after it was hit by Ukrainian drones on Sunday. More than 500 firefighters are battling the fire which at one point spread to over 100,000 square feet. Another case of Ukraine reaching deeper into Russia this week involved an airfield in the southern Volgorod region. The attacks this week and the ongoing incursion appear to have surprised not only Moscow but also Ukraine's western partners. Yet so far, while Washington has maintained it has no issue with Kiev's use of its weapons, it has claimed that it has not seen its weapons being moved to Kursk or inside Russia. Now, Russian officials have blamed Kiev, but Ukraine has so far not claimed responsibility. All right, for more on this, our correspondent Anas Malik is now joining us live from Kiev. Anas, uh, at least five people have been killed and 13 under, un others were wounded during an overnight Ukrainian strike on Belgorod. Plus, Kiev has been able to secure a POW exchange from its Kursk invasion. How else would Kiev be trying to capitalize on its Kursk offensive, which, which has taken everyone by surprise? Well, the fir first question, the first part first, uh, uh, Shivan, we're here in Kyiv and what is pertinent to know is the fact that last night uh, the Russian aggression on Ukraine, it's continued, it, it targeted two regions, first the Karamatorsk uh, uh, in Donetsk, which targeted a hotel where a Reuters team was staying and it had six of its journalists, uh, two of them are injured, one of them is unaccounted for according to the news agency uh, and the mayor says, uh, the mayor and the governor of uh, the area says, says that it was a deliberate attack on journalists. Then we saw the attack in Belgorod uh, in the region uh, which in which at least five people were killed and another 13 injured. Uh, but Kiev is undeterred. Kiev has managed to secure uh, on its part the biggest and the most equivalent exchange of prisoners, uh, 115 on either of the sides, uh, since its uh, invasion of Kursk earlier this month. And it is quite ambitious on their part because previously we've seen this hunky-dory balance between uh, the prisoner exchange that has been there. Uh, this prisoner exchange was mediated by the United Arab Emirates, the UAE. Uh, we're hearing that there could be more of these to follow with the mediation of Qatar and the UAE. Uh, but uh, on its part, Kyiv remains ambitious and President Zelensky, uh, who has been putting out messages to his team, say that uh, they are expecting a more and more supplies and B and more and more Western support, not just when it comes to ammunition, but when it comes to monetary support as well, so that they can continue with what their plans are in the Kursk region in the Russian territory. Sure. Anas, uh, there have been several projectiles aimed at Kyiv within this month, especially since the 6th of August. But as I was looking at your frame while you were interacting with us, people behind you seem to be going about their regular lives. It seems to be like a perfectly normal, sunny Sunday afternoon for you. What is regular life looking like in Kiev? This is, of course, a nation which is embattled since over two years now. 
Well, you rightly mentioned just as we got on to the live, what, where I am right now, it's the Independence Square and I'll just get a sight for the benefit of our viewers to get a sense that despite of uh, the war, life is continuing. This is uh, and metro stations around have been converted into uh, shelters. So people have gotten this semblance uh, of resilience in them uh, and they refuse to give up that yes, there is a reality that is war that is inflicted upon them but despite of that they refuse uh, to let go or to uh, be uh, to be deterred by that uh, to be uh, to be shaken in their resolve the reason we're seeing that what you see behind me this is the city center this is the independent square not far is from from here is the maidan uh, uh, flags from all across the from all across the globe. Those who uh, participating soldiers, they have been put here. Pictures have been put there uh, here as well in their memory. And people are uh, are as I said, they're resilient. Uh, I, I know that's a word that we've seen or heard quite used a lot. But they are indeed quite resilient to the fact that they hope that uh, Ukraine would be able to get uh, what's theirs. That's number one. And number two. They will contribute uh, in whatever capacity, uh, be that be this sense of normalcy uh, that is there, despite of the fact that uh, they continue to live under air raid sirens, uh, to give that, uh, to, sh to show that, uh, that the Ukrainian people uh, remain undeterred and they will contribute to the development and well-being of their nation. Shivan? Anas, it's a very contrasting image that I see, one that I see behind you and one if I were to just look at that, one can never gauge that the country and the city you're in, this is being part of a war which is well into its third year now, the biggest war Europe has seen ever since World War II, and it is perhaps shaping geopolitics at this point. But people behind you, clearly, it's a sign of what Ukraine is standing for at this point. Thank you so much for getting us the latest. That was Anas Malik joining us from Kiev.